So therefore, if you're just sitting still, you're communicating. And if you're speaking, you're communicating. And therefore, it's very good to have clear communication. <laughs> Clarity and communication is we're talking about getting the message message through. <laughs> is your message mixed or is it messy? And communication is key in relationships. I totally agree. And we just went live just so you know. <laughs> and I um, am, you know, I constantly feel like I'm battling in a sense communication, my own, getting my own message across clearly. I think I'm doing it and then it doesn't happen or it somehow it's like not being understood. You know, it's like, um, or I, I, I'm reading something and I don't quite get somebody else's message. A lot of our communication now happens through our phones, right? We have our text messages, we have our voicemail messages, we, and then we also have our email messages. So yes. uh, problematic. We, it's problematic. Well, it's really problematic because we try to shorthand things so much. Yeah, we try to shorthand things and, you know, we've got all these little acronyms you're supposed to know what it is and and little shorthand things and if you don't know that then you miss the message but the thing is we we get into a stream of consciousness with with our thinking and because we spoke to that person yesterday we assume that they remember exactly what we were talking about and what the tone of the message was and then we keep going and the person receives it and go what's this you know like where did this come from and and that's really odd right so it it makes for something kind of different i mean you've got to you've got to stop and and realize that you have to meet the other person today in this moment not a context that's been going on for oh well we talked last week and and then you just pick up the conversation from where it was you can't be doing that it doesn't work like that Right. Um, if you're not giving context, I, you know, I've started apologizing now in a sense, and I probably don't need to apologize, but people think they're being clear, right? And then all of a sudden, I don't understand them. And so I feel like I have to apologize and say, I'm sorry, but could you give me a little more context around that? Why are you saying this? I'm even finding it in working with people who um, are creating content online. And I'm asking them to help me with my clients. And I'm like, well, why did you say this in this message on social media? Are people really going to get it? Are they going to connect the dots? Mm -hmm. And I really think people assume people connect the dots way more than they do. And well, it, I, I, I think about this too. Let me just put that in there because you've got some really good ideas. I don't want to miss this one. But <clears throat> you think of a person on their phone. And the more they're on their phone, the more they're in here, you know, the more they're damaging their spine all day long. Um, straight and, and they're like in their head, like this is what I'm thinking right now. This is what's going through my head. This is my, my mood right now. This is my urgency right now. This is what's top of mind. And so they text something. I have no clue about what that was. Right. But they're in a stream of thought. And this is this whole thing of isolation by, by digital device, right? Mm -hmm. because, because they have a relationship or I have a relationship with my phone doesn't mean that that translates to the relationship with the recipient of the message that I just jotted off to them because I thought of something. You know, we've lost the connectivity. Right. You know, this is really important. You know, that's why when clients say to me, you know, can we just talk on the phone? I say, no, you know, not unless I know you really well, because I, I need to see you in space. I need to look at you. I need to see the look on your face. Um, you know, certainly with my clients, I'm reading the muscle tone and the color in their face and the changes. And so with these written messages, all of that is lost. Let me put that in context. You said, um, you know, you need to see them. But you didn't say how like are, you now go. am i going to oh i have to come in in person yeah no, you actually do it through zoom like or skype or 
a video conference. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So it's just the subtle things. We I do it all the time. I think I people understand what I mean. See me in person, or you know, no, see me. Yeah, I need to see you, but I don't need to see like. And people, I have to do this a lot when I'm doing consults. As you know, they say, "Oh, wait, where's your office?" I say, "Oh, we're going to do this by video conference." And it's actually going to be way more productive because you're going to be able to see my screen. I'm going to be able to explain things. And sometimes it takes long. And I feel like a total nerd and geek trying to <laughs> longhand this thing and explanation out. And I do take extra care because I like it when somebody does it for me because I know I need that context. My brain is like trying to hang on every word and, and figure out what you're meaning. And if you don't give me words, I can't figure out meaning. And yeah. um, and just it's but it's amazing to me how many people are like you know what that i mean like it's like yeah, that's true and take the example that you just used you know think about how our world has changed it, when i say i need to see you if the doctor said i need to see you you knew you had to come in right <laughs> right um or i need to see you was in a context where there was no other way to see you Right. But now we've moved into a new paradigm where we can see each other this way. And so you're absolutely right. We need to clarify things, especially, and what you're bringing up is especially when there's transition happening. And so there's a transition in our culture happening, but there may be a transition in your relationship happening too. Yeah. And when we assume that communications have had already gone through or people understood, stand where you're coming from, there's a greater risk of miscommunication. I just had another example happen the other day. Somebody emailed me and said, hey, I'd like to sign, set up a time to talk to you about my services. And I'm like, OK, you I get like a billion of those messages a day. I'm like, hey, you know, your SEO on your site is this and you need funding for that. And, you know, talk to me. And so I'm constantly like deleting them or not responding or responding, no thank you. And then I saw there was somebody else CC'd on it. I'm like, oh, maybe that person told, the person who was CC'd told the person who was emailing me to email me to set up a time to talk. I had to think that through because uh, the, person, yeah. the person who didn't, who told this, the, the one to send me the email didn't say, make sure you tell her I told you to set up an email, you know, a meeting, the person sending it wouldn't probably thought that that person told me, the originator told me that this was coming through, but none of that happened. I had to kind of, I started drafting a message like, no, thank you. I don't want to meet. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. You know, something said, look beyond and think beyond what this message is. Like, why would I want to talk to this kind of person? Ah, uh, but now I have a reason to, ah. Uh, Yes, well, speaking of taking things out of context and what, adding on to what you just said, I just want to throw a little little issue here, a little pet peeve. I had a person uh, ask to be my friend on Facebook the other day, and she was kind of interesting. I always look at everybody's bio before I say yes to anybody. So I thought, well, it might be an interesting person to have in the conversation. Two hours later, I got this message in uh, a text message or a message on Facebook uh, in Messenger, and it said, would you like to book a consultation? That was a whole message from this person who I had just answered yes to her friend request. So I wrote back and I said, are you offering me a consultation? And she, and sh she wrote back and said, are you interested in a in a consultation? And I said, are you asking me to purchase a consultation? And she wrote back and said, no worries if you're not interested. That's a pretty negative, leaving, leaving a negative impression, right? Yeah, but then I had this issue, Laura, and you'll relate to this, and I'm sure a lot of other people who do. Am I her... Am I supposed to help her understand you don't do this? Or shall I just respond to her like I did? Or should I say, you know, it's really not good etiquette to not have a relationship with a person before you ask them to buy something. And then I thought, no, I'm not her parent. I'm not going to do any of that. You know, and then I, I told you what the conversation is. But there's an example of the way people have a thought. Okay, you've, you were my friend, so now I'm going to offer and see if you'd like to buy something from me. 
that's totally out of context. We don't have a relationship. I don't even know what you sell. Yeah, right. And why would I want to have a, <laughs> a, a conversation or a consultation paid or free with you? Why would I spend my that's, time? That's right. Like you haven't even There's had no a, context. No context, no relationship. No relationship. So, no con even I mean, even on LinkedIn, I we do a lot of outreach for our clients and we are saying, Hey, would you like to get to know each other? Here's a link to my calendar. A lot of times we're doing that. So we can start that relationship. It's social media is all about building relationships if you're going to do it right as a business. So right. I err on the side of giving people a lot of context and really listening to them instead of saying, Hey, do you want to buy from me? That's like that is like, so, hey, you want to marry me on the first date? You know, it's like yeah. icky, it's weird, it doesn't come off right, and it's way out of context, you know, and there's no consideration for the other person on the other side. And, yeah. it, you know, but what's really interesting about, you know, the, the lack of context being given is how much it tells you about the other person. Well, it was immediate. <laughs> You know, you're absolutely right. Like I went, oh, this person is maybe new to doing this online. Maybe, you know, so I went and read her thing and she's a, an intuitive who does spiritual readings. And, you know, I kind of knew that about her, but I, I didn't know what kind of session she was offering me. Was it an introductory session? Was it a get to know you session? Right. Um, I had no idea. And I felt a little bit like, like uh, she had knocked on my door. I'd opened the door. She stuck her foot in the door and said, you're going to buy from me. And I thought, no, no <laughs> my immediate impression, you know, was, oh, you don't know what you're doing. But then the secondary impression was, and you're not going to do it to me. Right. And so it's very, very important for us to have this conversation because words don't mean the same thing to other people as they meant in your head when you wrote them. So when this person, you know, approached you, knocked on your Facebook door and said, hey, would you like a consult? And then you asked some clarifying questions. And finally, when not answering the question, they made their own context up about you. Like, oh, if you're not interested, mm -hmm. then it's okay. Yeah. Um, so it was just like, there was n no part of you considered whatsoever. And that's, you know, really interesting. It's like, okay, why would you even want to engage with somebody like that? But well, you, you wouldn't if you're me, because she didn't demonstrate any knowledge of me. She didn't, you know, didn't even use my name. All she said was, are you interested in a consultation? So let's talk about the people you specialize in helping the spouses, exes, partners, colleagues of um, hijackals, right? The people who are chronically difficult. And this could be maybe a little red flag, this person who came into you as a hijackal. So somebody who's hijackal bait, as you've talked about, somebody who's susceptible to helping people and wanting approval from people and um, needy and desperate yeah, kind of feeling desperate, might react a different way to somebody like uh, the, the person who asked you, hey, you want to consult out of the blue. So it's a really uh, interesting choice you made because you're not being baited. You're setting your boundary by saying, give me something here. Like, I, you know, I have questions. This is out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but you're, you're, you're being kind it, you know you're not being mean you're just asking for clarification until you make a decision and you're you're not trying to justify yourself or mother that person um so what would you say about that though about like somebody else's response that might get fed into that and what they should be aware of oh sure well if it were a hijackal who'd written that note the next when i wrote back and said are you you know uh, wh what are you offering would have said, well, a person in your position should know that they need to use consultants, <laughs> right? Because already there can't be anything wrong with the hijackal. So therefore, immediately they would put some blame on me, right? Well, it kind of did happen that way. It was like, well, if you're not interested. Yeah, but that's not blame. That's her fear of engaging. My read on it is her fear of engaging further. Okay. Because I didn't, I didn't bite right away. I didn't do what she wanted me to do. She doesn't have the skills. I really, un, really think she doesn't have the skills to say, 
oh, well, um, what I'm really offering is this, and I've read your profile, and I thought perhaps you'd be interested. So it was a fear of communicating, I think. And I think that that comes into our earlier conversation, is we have a fear of being rejected. And so we try to try to get things to go so we won't be rejected and that plays into our communication and then the other thing that i think we have to remember and think about is that when you write the words on the page you could hear them in your head you knew where the emphasis went and you you know all that um but the other person has no clue so they're they've just come out of a terrible meeting and they're having, you know, really doubts about their self-worth and everything. And they read your message in that context. And then they're like, oh, and there's another person dumping on me. Mm-hmm. And it had nothing to do with that, you know. <laughs> so I um, I think we have to get really smart about that. Yeah. And you said something that's sticking with me earlier about, you know, with all the different ways of communication now that we have and all the different inputs we have, we have to get more specific in our communication because there's so many other variables involved. And so I was asking myself, why does communication feel so much more burdensome now? Yeah. And it's because of that. You have to take the extra, well, I feel like I have to take the extra time to communicate what I want and not send a mixed message, not send a messy message, on top of that, if we're like the person you just said came out of a meeting, we get this message, not just react about it. We've done plenty of shows on reacting versus responding. And um, how can I sound most neutral and clear and not blaming and not, you know, uh, so there's all that. It, it just seems there's a lot more to take into consideration than I ever thought of at any other time in my life. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And people are touchier. You know, one of the things that we're learning about people who isolate, which are everybody who's walking around with their phone like this. I mean, how many times have you been in a crosswalk and you've had to avoid the person who's on their phone because they're not paying attention? Right. You know that there is this huge uptick, you know, by statistical standards in people getting killed because they stepped out in the traffic with their phones. Yep. You know, so... What kind of consciousness does a person have who's writing a text message or reading one while crossing the street to get what it is you're saying? You know, the variables, as you're pointing out so wisely, Laura, are huge. Like there are more variables than ever, and you wouldn't think so. But if you just start with the fact that you don't have the cues of seeing somebody's face or their body language or the way they're standing in space, um you don't even know what they're doing with their eyebrows. That makes all the difference in the world, right? And so it's important for us to to really understand that your message can get mixed, which means I sent something and you heard something different. Or it can get messy, which is that I thought we were in the conversation we were having three weeks ago and we're just a continuation and you feel like you just walked into the party and have no clue, right? So it really does take this consciousness that you're speaking of to to say, oh, I have to be a little more aware and alert and alive when I get a message and I'm going to respond to it. Maybe we need to just take a moment and say, okay, what are the variables here? Could I be misreading this? Am I reading this correctly? What do I know about this person? Because I've had to do that. You know, I'll get something that's a bit terse from somebody and I'll think, hmm, I know that person really well. Oh, they would never have sent this unless they were under a whole lot of stress. Okay, I know that. I know that that my friend gets stressed and when she gets stressed, she communicates in this way. So I've got to do that work or otherwise I'm going to write back and say, how dare you talk to me like that? Right. Right? And that, yeah, and then it just blows <laughs> up. So it's so validating to hear that, you know, we have to take the extra time. It's like, oh, but I really don't want to, but I do, you know, I have to, if we care about each other, if we care about our communication, we have to consciously craft messages that are, we, te- we are more attentive to the, all the variables, to the potential ways it might be taken to make it 
to consider where the other person's at, to consider where it came from, you know, um, so many things, and then clarify. I mean, I really think um, clarifying is a okay to do. And Mm -hmm. um, the more we do it, the more we are training people also to be clear with us. Mm -hmm. And I, I really think that that's one of the reasons I'm take the extra time to as as much as I can clarify and as and also you mentioned something in the last um, comment it's like giving people the benefit of the doubt like sometimes we want to just jump to conclusions <laughs> why because we're feeling a little anxious right so we jump to a conclusion about somebody else mm-hmm. but it's not true so I always like to say you know sometimes I'll write my emails two and three times over because I'm like, did I just jump to an occlus- a conclusion? And mm-hmm. if I, if there's that, even that little inkling of a question, then I'll just check in with them. Did I miss something here? Mm-hmm. And I find the same thing. I read mine, mine over too. And then I, I go back and usually what's missing is that I went to respond immediately to them and I didn't put it in any kind of context or I didn't say, you know, you know, something pleasant, like, great to hear from you. I was thinking about this or that. And, you know, now you got this, this message. So let me respond. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't encase the message. You know, we just get really terse as though we can only have 20 words in a telegram, you know? Um, and so <laughs> therefore, you know, everyone has to count. Um, no, that's usually just laziness on our part. We don't want to type that many these days. So it is really important to go back and figure it out, you know, that what helps the relationship as opposed to just the words that you want to convey. I teach negotiation in the MBA program at the university, and I tell my people, do not send an email unless it's a confirmation of facts, an affirmation of the person, or a a congratulation. So information, affirmation, congratulation. Other than that, go talk to them. <laughs> or text them, I, hey, can I clarify this with you in person? You know, yes, something yes. Something very neutral, not can we talk? You yeah, <laughs> exactly. We need to talk about this. You yeah, know, how many people like to hear that? Yeah, right. exactly. Like, we need to talk. That's how they'll read it. And that's like, oh, what have I done? Or... You know, then we get into anxiety again. It's very fraught with stuff these days. And for most of us, we seem to be really interested in quantity rather than quality. Like, how about each relationship that you have? You know, if I'm going to send you something and we've talked about something, I still take the time to say, hey, you know, unless we're just talking about a date or something, how are you doing? Uh, you know, here's, yeah, I give you some information and then I ask a question. Now that may be very old school because, you know, people are getting all terse, but when you get terse and you're young and then somebody asks you, what did you mean? Then people get their knickers in a twist. You know, well, I meant what just, what I said. I've noticed this with, with particularly much younger people is that they think like, I delivered the message. You should have got it. <laughs> and oh. Like, oh really how how does that work i am not in your head you know and it's like hijackles you, you deliver a, a message to say how you feel and a hijackle says oh you don't feel that at all here's what you feel because hijackles love to define your reality for you because it gives them power and control they're so right <laughs> somebody sends you a message and and then when you question what does this mean they're all haughty and like, what's wrong with you? You can't figure it out. You know, oh, we've got a lot of softening to do in these messages. Mm, I got a whole education, uh, partial education from a 20 something about text messages. If you use punctuation, you're being terse. I was like, this person <laughs> was a English major in college too. I was like, really? <laughs> I'm like, I had no idea. I just thought I was being clear because I'm ending my sentence. And no, you don't need punctuation in texts. I'm oh, like, yes, you do. Otherwise, know. It, you know, I mean, there are so many examples of lack of punctuation, meaning yeah. something really awful compared to what I, you I wanted. Basically, 
kidding, but I, I couldn't believe I heard that from her. I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, I really heard that from you, her, but I don't agree with it. But the subtext that she's taking from it, if you put punctuation and you capitalize things, um, then you are being emphatic and you are being terse with them. That's a whole subtext that they take from that. It's like, whoa. Yeah. And then here comes this <laughs> question, which we could talk about another day. Who bends? Do we start using capitals and punctuation or do we say, oh, no, you, that's the way I text. <laughs> right. You know? I like who's, who's, it's not about being right. It's about communicating. It's and, not. Yeah. But <laughs> on top of that, they won't tell you this. It just happened to come up. So you don't know if they think you're this rude, terse person because you're trying to communicate well. In old they, school. Right. In old school, uh, they just don't, they don't even tell you. So you don't even have an opportunity to learn or to have a conversation and say, hey, don't take it that way. So it's, yeah. you know, the, the communication is messy if it's mixed and it's not clear and you're making things mean things that not everybody's agreed upon. <laughs> you know? Yeah, if you care about the relationship, you know, be clear. And like if, if, you know, it, that it's about the relationship. If you don't want the other person to misunderstand, you take the time to, to give it your best shot so they won't. But, it, you know, we've got to think about these things. We don't need to move as quickly as we're moving. And that's really important. Yeah, we're doing business and we're busy and all those things. But, you know, if you're just answering somebody who asks you for a fact, you're good to go. But if you have a relationship with that person, take 30 seconds more and make it relational. You know, connect. So they want to connect with you. They want they feel like you were interested in them. You know, it, it's important and it's important in business. You know, it was people who just send facts back and forth. Yes, that's great if that's all you asked for. But if you just if you just take the time to say, yeah, that was a great meeting. Here's what happened. Sets tone. You're always setting tone for your relationship by what you say and by what you don't say. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't speak at all. Because <laughs> remember, if you don't go to a meeting, somebody will make up a reason why you weren't there. Of course. You People know. are always interpreting your behavior and your words. So clarity is key. And ideally your words match your actions. And if they don't, and if they they don't believe the actions. Yeah. <laughs> People will believe your actions over your words. So Yeah. You know, over at, at I have two podcasts, Emotional Savvy and Save Your Sanity. And uh, over there, I'm always talking about these things because in emotional savvy, to have emotional savvy, you've got to think about these things. Mm -hmm. Who are you? Like people will say to me, well, you know, my mother wasn't very nice to me and she didn't treat me well all the time I was growing up. Should I go to her funeral? And, it, it, you know, they give me 10 reasons why they shouldn't. And they say, what should I do? And my answer to that is, who are you? I don't, whoever your mother was, whomever your mother was, is not the issue. Who are you in this time and place? And how do you behave from your values and your vision of a world that works? So the same thing applies to our communication. Right. It's not what they did. It's what I did. Right? So if I go the extra mile, then I'm furthering and demonstrating I want to further the communication I don't give as good as I get kind of thing. You know, that doesn't make a world work. Yes. Let's make the world work. Let's communicate. Let's take our messages and make them clear. I loved what you just said earlier about if you care about a relationship, be clear and connect, you know, yeah. be clear and take the, take the time to connect and be clear. Wow. It's been a robust conversation as always with you. Um, you can find Dr. Roberta Shaler at forrelationshiphelp.com and you can join me at my website at transformtoday.com and say the names of your podcasts again because I think they're great. Yo, get them wherever you like to download your, your podcasts. One is called Emotional Savvy, The Relationship Help Show. Great guests on that show. And the other is called Save Your Sanity, Help for Handling Hijackals. 
Uh, there I do most of the talking, but occasionally I have expert guests. So, you know, whatever you need, there's something there for you in the relationship world. And we'll be back with you in another couple of weeks for the Transform Your Relationship show. We will. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Roberta. Bye for now, everyone. <laughs>